good morning everyone. It is uh, the beginning of day three, I think. Uh, tomorrow midday we'll complete the 72 hour challenge. So we've got all day today and then tonight. I've got some um, goals in mind for the day. I know Dustin does as well. So we'll try to knock out as much stuff as we can today and uh, do our best to, um, you know, survive. Morning. <laughs> How'd you sleep? Groovy. So actually, a lot warmer than we did last night. Yeah, you know? yeah, I did sleep a little bit warmer than the night before. And even though I think it might have been colder. Yeah. Tonight's supposed to be the coldest night from what I when I checked the weather before we came out a couple days ago. Um, it's supposed to get down into the teens, I think, tonight. So that's cool. <laughs> That'll be really fun. Um, I was rocking the hot rock. Dustin turned me on to um, working the, the hot rock, getting this thing warm by the fire. And then I was just kind of tucking it behind my my knees like this. And just and that was making a pretty big difference, actually, keeping my feet warmer and um, just making me cozier. So uh, that was good. I'll continue that. The hot rock brotherhood. We'll get tattoos, it'll be great. <laughs> yeah, if you fell in there right now, that would suck. There it is. Oh, fingers. Numb. <laughs> Completely bet. numb. Hopefully that holds until I spill it. <laughs> I've already gone through my two tablets, which are in the adventure kit. And so I want to just kind of showcase that we do make available the other, the, the items individually. So you can have redundancy because two tablets, which is about two liters of water is not going to last you 72 hours. Or if you do, you're starting to get really dehydrated. So we do make a, a full kit and essentials kit. I brought this along to kind of showcase the way I like to do redundancy. I don't put all these things in there. I actually kind of do a mix match. We make two water kits. One's the adventure water kit. It's this big, it's made to fit the belt. This one's a smaller version. And you can see it fits right here. Oh, that is significantly more compact. Yeah. It's compact. It doesn't have the foil and it doesn't have the pre-filter on it. And it has one less Ranger Man. But it fits in the hat and it gives you that redundancy so, like in this case, I've got two more liters of water I can pull from. Kind of. Why are you taking your pants off? I don't know, just two men in the woods. Nice cozy fire. Stop. Maybe it's I'd just, set a scene. It just seemed right. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to go with it. What kind of music are you going to put to the soundtrack? <laughs> <is? laughs> so I'm deep pantsing because I've got a, uh, when we were doing a little bit of jumping from rock to rock there, one of the rocks jumped up and bit me in the buttocks. And uh, you can see right here, that's already getting gnarly. It's gonna continue to rip. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew it up. I'm gonna use the fishing line and the, uh, and the needle in our kit and, uh, and get that repaired. Cool. So clothing is super important when we're out here. If you're not dressed appropriately, that's, I mean, you're breaking kind of rule number one, in my opinion. Before you even head out, make sure you've got things covered. Check the weather report, make sure you're dressed appropriately. If, and if you had to sleep out here, are you going to freeze to death in the clothes that you're wearing without any shelter? If you can come out with the clothes that you're wearing and sleep out here at night and not freeze, I think that's a that's a good plan and a good win. So first off, I've got good footwear. Um, these are some Keen boots. They fit my feet really, really well. That's kind of why I've been with them for a while. Um, and they are waterproof, except for this giant, big, gaping hole in the top where your foot goes in. If it goes over that, you're not you're going to be a little bit wet. But anyway, I've got some darn tough wool socks. I've got some merino wool thermals underneath my true spec expedition pants. These pants have been awesome. I wear these literally every day um, for all tasks and activities. I've swam in them. 
I have hiked in them. I've camped. I work out in them. I, I very rarely change into workout clothes anymore. When I get home from work or whatever it is I'm doing for the day and I need to get my workout in, this is what I exercise in. So great pants. I have no issues, no, no tears, no holes, no nothing from, from the bushwhacking we were doing yesterday. Um, and then on top, I'm wearing the TruSpec um, H2O proof. I think it's called the three in one parka. Don't quote me on that, but great jacket. Um, blocks the wind, completely waterproof. Um, doesn't breathe that great, but in this weather, that's not a real priority for me. So I could always take this off and then underneath it, let's see if I can show. Underneath it is a removable insulating layer so that, that I could wear just by itself. Maybe I'll show you here. Yeah. So it's basically just a puffy jacket underneath it that I can take take the raincoat off and wear it by myself. And this does breathe really, really well, and it dries really, really fast. Um, so that's keeping me nice and cozy and warm, and life is pretty good. Oh, underneath, underneath I've got a few layers on. I, you know, I've done the thing where you go out in the t-shirt and you rough it and you freeze and you shiver and life is miserable, and that's cool. Um, but I wanted to come out here and the point of this was to kind of showcase the Wazoo gear and show its versatility and reliability and just overall usefulness keeping you alive. Um, so I wore a bunch of layers because I knew it was going to get cold. But anyway, I've got a, a wool uh, sweater on and then I've got a couple of wool t-shirts on basically underneath it. And I've been, you know, fairly warm. Not, I wouldn't say super comfortable, but comfortable enough. 50 pound moss green braided spectra made in USA. Getting back to that Hank style. Yeah, it's just like this where it's gotcha. in a coil. And then you can undo this knot here at the top, just half hitch, and you got both of those. But if you start pulling and yanking on it, you can easily get it knotted up and you're gonna be cussing up a storm because it's stuff likes to bind on itself. A real man can stitch his own finger up. This guy, this guy did his own sutures. I'm pretty <laughs> impressed when he tried to cut his finger off. Yeah, didn't didn't successfully cut my finger off. Successfully <laughs> sutured it up though. That's good. So I'm sewing from one side. I like to bend my needle just to have that that hook needle. So I knotted this, pull it around, and that'll be my stopper knot. Oh. One way you can kind of lock stitch, maybe that's what it's called. I was taught this by, I was on a ferry in Alaska and this native lady was sewing some stuff up in the ferry and I just was watching her and asked her how she did some stuff. And so if you're doing this, I don't know what this stitch is called, where you just kind of go in back on itself. Back through the loop? Yeah, back through the loop. You just come back around on itself, twist it like twice. Uh, okay. And then create like a surgeon's knot or something to lock down. And you can do that every so often. You can just do a couple loops and then you can do that lock knot, let lock stitch. So I brought my pack and thermometer away from the fire a little bit just to see what the actual temperature is outside. Let's see if I can get you to see that. It's right at 30 degrees outside right now. And that explains all of the that. Fine job right there. There we go. That's good, man. We didn't have any food on this. There's no real rations. However, I did fly here. And thanks to Southwest Airlines, I have a snack mix. It's been in my pocket for a couple days, so it might be kind of smashed up. Hopefully it's not just pretzels and all squished <laughs> up. Powdered pretzel. So yeah, I say we split it. Cool. You in? Thank you. I can take some saltiness and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, don't, I won't grab it with my grubby hands. Oh crap! No, oh, we'll get it. We gotta get that. There you go, buddy. That's probably half. Look get it. after it. That's pretty good. I'm pretty hungry right now. It, like the hunger pains come and go, but at this actual moment, I'm pretty hungry. So salt is nice. The salt is good. So the lesson is. Always keep your snack packs. 
after you get out of a plane. Uh -huh. Don't eat them on the plane. Put yep. them in your pocket. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know. Oh, yeah. The salt is good. You know, I've gone a long time without eating before. Or at least not eating very much. And salt... Even the tiniest little bit of salt was what I craved. Just saltine crackers were the most amazing thing on the face of the earth after going without for so long. So I'm going to attempt to make some sort of artificial lure, fly of some sort, um, and maybe potentially if there's any fish in this stream down here, I might catch one. I haven't seen any fish, have you? No, I just saw upstream. It seemed like I saw them kind of spurring around, scurrying. Scurrying. Is that what fish do? Scurry? Well, I said spurring first. Spurring. I don't know what that word is. <laughs> spurring. The spurring trout of Colorado. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know if there's any fish in this stream. I was told that it pretty much dried up a couple years back, um, which means problems for trout populations so we'll see I, I you know i don't know we'll see if there's anything in there we might get some action but but in an effort to um you know produce some more foodstuffs a protein source for us uh, i'd like to try to make some sort of lure finding bait with the weather the way it is as cold as it is is going to be tough we might be able to scrounge up something but most likely our best bet is going to be some sort of artificial so i'm just gonna make myself a fly tying vice um something that's gonna hold my hook while I work on it because it's very, very difficult to work on a hook, tie stuff, attach things to a hook um, while holding it in one hand, so. That is what I'm after. And now I'm gonna split it down the middle, just a little ways. So I just got myself a little split in my stick. Steal one of your hooks. And then I'll insert the hook into that split. And then I'll take some of the fishing line and wrap around this to, to squeeze it up. And that will hold the hook in place while I work on it. And I'll just probably stick this in the ground in front of me. So then we'll just take this and wrap it around underneath the hook. And that squeezes that split in place. I used to tie flies a lot as a kid. Fly fishing was kind of my thing. I haven't been into it much in the past decade or so. Need to get back in it. And I'm going to use some of this Technora cord and see if I can fuzz up a bit of it and see what that looks like. Yeah, this is going to be great. Then you'd kind of spin it around it like that. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> we are going to be in business. <laughs> yeah, that's going to work good. So now that that's wrapped around my thread, I can take that and wrap it around the shank of the hook. And that will maybe give me some sort of beefy looking, tasty looking body to that a fish might find attractive. What's really cool about this stuff Oh! You can get small. That's what I want right there. Exactly <laughs> that. That's exactly what I want. Cool. That's the perfect size. You're a genius. <laughs> that stuff does not rip. Like when, if you, uh, that's why we put the snips at the uh, at both ends. Yeah. If you try to rip it, like a grown man can pull both sides and it won't. Really? Like, it, yeah, just it just stretches and stretches. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think this will work. Take it through, like so. I know it's probably hard to see on camera, but like that. Let me pull.
pull this out. Yeah, that worked. Good. I catch something, man. It looks just like the native uh, flurry whoppers. Yeah. That are around. Yeah, here. the flurry whoppers are um, pretty aggressive at p times of the year, but the trout love to eat them, you know. <laughs> Our fly. I mean, you can kind of mess around with it and twist it around a little bit. Like I said, it kind of wants to spin around the hook a little. A little pitch on the um, little pine sap on the hook shank to start with might, might have cured that problem. So these holes are made in all these objects to at least fit the bead chain, which also means it's going to fit the Technora cord. The kit is always meant to be pretty modular. Some of this stuff, like. I've never thought about it, but it wasn't an accident that this stuff, we do have things we have, when we make a hole, we make a hole diameter pretty much the same every time so that it can, you can make it your own. You can modularize like this. I feel like you just made that word up. Modularize? Yeah. Oh, it's definitely made up. <laughs> That's a Dustinism. <laughs> That's good. So what do you got on there? Your primary tools, I guess? Yeah. I think That's the same ones that I, I copy. I'm copying you on this oh, one okay. completely, yeah. I think I might, I might add or subtract something, but for right now, I think I'm copying you exactly. Yep. I've got good ideas, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and I like how you stow it in your hat that way too. And in the military, they call this dummy cord, where you attach it to yourself or to your kit, so even a dummy can't lose it. Love these sandals. Have worn these sandals all over the world. I mean, literally, I've worn them all over the world in uh, four continents, um, 15 plus countries. Literally hiked them. 14ers here in Colorado. Hiked them. The highest mountain in North Africa in these sandals. Um, European backpacking. Use those sandals. So let's just say this is a really bad case scenario where I was wearing these sandals, got off the beaten track, and now I'm out here in the 72 hour scenario. And we already saw it's over it's 30 degrees right now. Yeah. And uh, it was like 60, 60 ish when we started day one, right? Mm -hmm. For the day hike, that would have been totally cool. Not so cool right now. No. <laughs> I'm going to add socks to my sandals. And the way I'm going to do that, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and rig this up. This is not a project I've ever done before, or nor have I ever seen anyone do. But the only cloth I have to sacrifice right now would probably be my wazoo shirt. Something like this. Oh, yeah. And then I'll sew this up, and I'll have, like, little booties. <laughs> Let's just test this. We're doing this in real time. Yeah, as soon as they go in, it should lock everything in place. Oh, gosh, look at you. <laughs> Feels good. Those are great. They feel real good. And they look so cool. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, man, that is cool. Cool. So I'm shirtless, but now I'm sock full. So <laughs> we're, we're stepping up in the world. This is where we collected the cattails before, but there's no cattails with the, the seed heads on them right here. And that's what we want. For my... They're on the other side. They're on the other side. Over there. <laughs> I think the best case scenario is we go upstream and we see if there's any kind of crossing. We'll come all the way back down. This is the temperature of the water that we're looking at here. That's um, unpleasant to say the least to go in and just we'd be have an absolute shiver fest afterwards. Nice. Didn't even get your socks wet. That's what we're looking for right there. When you twist these things up, you get about a hundred bajillion seeds that come out. Really fluffy. And will they make it makes a really good tender. Um, and it will also do some really fantastic insulation in our uh, very stylish socks. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah.
So the cattails are there and we are here. <laughs> we are here and frigid water is there. Yeah, frozen icy water right there. That's probably pretty deep if I had to guess. Yeah, easily could get deep quick, just like that mud just sinks down for these cattails. So Jason needs a hook. Needs a hook. He's using the beaver chew method to get through it, which is ironic because we're in a beaver dam area. I'm going to call this the insulator um, abducting <laughs> apparatus. That works like a charm. Bam. Nice. I don't know how many we need. I'm guessing four, probably. That would be nice. Maybe two, two per foot. Would yeah. Be, would be great. Cause it, yeah. Because when you, I'll do it later. I'll show you what I'm talking about. But when you twist these things and get it to do its thing, it just, it grows exponentially. It's crazy how many seeds are actually in these. So I don't think we need that many, but we'll get as many as we can get. Thank you. Should we save this special multi-tool? <laughs> it looks cool. I don't know what else we're going to use it for, but either. we'll find something. Maybe we'll, right. we'll have a good... Everyone needs a stick in their hand. Got to have a whack... You know, you know what? I have killed a lot of animals with a, a stick just like this. And IAA is also a whacker. It's yeah. A IAA. It's a, yeah, it's also a... Um, um, what will we call it? Small creature dispatchal, dispatching implement. Uh, so yeah, what I typically do is I would, I would leave some of the branches on the end and make it like a fly swatter and you can get crickets, you can get small frogs and, uh, lizards and all kinds of stuff with a tool just like that. Basically a big, long fly swatter. It works really well. I've, I've eaten a lot of critters like that. All right. So, so far we've been using our purification tablets to purify our water. But what's really cool about this kind of system, what's in the adventure kit is we include a six inch by 12 inch piece of foil and the uh, you can use that in combination with our emergency reservoir to make what they call a SODIS solar distillation it's just a six hours would probably be a safe bet and the direct sun is going to have the the uv sun penetrating through there bouncing around and killing anything in there right uv is a great killer of of uh, microbes we got it actually facing directly into the sun facing southerly right now so that the sun will, will get another four or five hours hopefully out of it um, in full sun and then um, we'll drink it from there so on a stream like this uh, my go-to for fishing is pretty much always a cane pole unless i'm bringing modern fishing equipment obviously um and just because it just makes it easier to present small flies and that kind of stuff even small little worms or bait that you might be using just makes it really easy to kind of put it right where you want it. I'm gonna do some pseudo backcountry hillbilly fly fishing today. That worked. Definitely putting these little knives to the test. Yeah. See what they can do. I always try to leave a little um, kind of fork at the at the end if I can. It just kind of helps keep the line secured on the end of the cane pole. Probably seven feet or so, maybe a little longer. What I'm going to do, th there, listen, there's there's lots of ways to skin a cat, right? The the way that I do it may not work for you, but this 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 way always has worked for me. If you have if you're dealing with really big fish, I would highly suggest tying it off not only to the tip of your fishing rod, but also running the line continuously back to where the handle is, because it will. Um, if the tip should break off, you'll still be able to hold on to that fish. You're not going to lose it. But they are very tiny fish in this stream. Not going to be an issue. I don't can't imagine us breaking the, the uh, rod. So I'm just going to tie off to my um, to the tip of my rod here. Simple squared out in the end. It can't come off the end because of the fork, and that's going to work just fine. And then I want about the same length of line as my rod is long. And if you were worried about cutting your line, you could always just kind of spool it up around the base of the, around the handle. 
all the excess you could kind of wrap around the handle here and then run it up there and then you wouldn't have to cut your cordage if that was a concern for you but now it's time to attach our leader material um, to our main line here I'm gonna do a bow line right here and that will be my loop So a small loop like that. I've got a loop in both ends of my lines here, all right? So what I will do now is fish this through, fish the big line through the small line. See that? So I take the big line through the small loop, and then I'll take the small line where the knot is, I'll take that pull that all the way through and what that does for me is that right there now I've got a loop to loop connection that can be easily undone and I can change that out pretty quick I must say this is one of the ugliest flies that I have ever used before it's usually twisted about eight times stick it through I think that'll probably get it done. Yep. Yeah, it works good. So I've got here um, the necklace that I've been sporting for a while now, um, and what's really, really cool, I've actually modified this one quite a bit. This is not the way it actually comes. I have attached the Viking whetstone to it, but I've still got my striker, I've still got my ceramic striker, and I've still got my ferro rod attached to it, um, which is nice. And the really cool thing about this cordage, and probably the primary reason why I, I went with this cordage and not some other, uh, like paracord or something like that, is that you can cut into this thing. The red stuff on the inside is the tinder. So there's our tinder. There you go. So I sew zip ties right here in my cash cap. Boom. Red sauce. Mm-hmm. It's like it was meant to be. Yeah, these are buck saw compatible. <laughs> buck saw compatible zip ties. You don't see those everywhere. No, no, custom wazoo thing. <laughs> 400 pound test, right? Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. <laughs> How much more do you want to go? I don't know, dude. As long as it stays together. Sometimes you go back and tighten it, but right now I think... That's pretty tight. Yeah. Wire saws are very good for bone. Although I haven't used it on, like, old hard bone like that. Yeah, so this we'll is see. as hard as it gets. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's a nice sound. Wow, that is. That's tight. Look at that. Yeah, so you could get through. I mean, if you were butchering a large animal or something and needed to get through through a green bone, it would work much better. Oh, I bet. yeah, easily. Uh, much softer. But that's cutting pretty quickly through, through this old, rotten, dried out, crusty bone. You can even, you know, two hands or two people. Two people. You can feel that you can put a lot more leverage onto it. Yeah. It naturally has more weight to it, so it's going to do a little more work for you as well. So it's just going to cut down a lot on the, the effort that you have to go through with this one. Kind of mechanical advantage with this guy. That's perfect, man. That turned out a lot better than I thought. And we made it 
using only wazoo gear mm -hmm. which is techno cooler. cord right here in the back the wire saw right here in the front and then we use the zip ties to secure it yep and we um we cut everything with just the wire saws we with, notched everything out with the wire saws with and, the makeshift quickie bow saw mm -hmm. which is so much more comfortable and easier and more efficient to use than just doing like the thumb loops through the end It's like, um, it looks kind of like mink skin or mink mm. hair. Yeah, really soft. It's super soft. So, looks like the way this is configured, I don't have to take it off. Just need to kind of open up my little cattail door. Insulation port. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like down, really. That's, that's the, I think that's the common ratio that people use, two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. Per foot. Two and a half cattail heads to a sock. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Of a baby goose. This is a tiny tender goose. Gosling. <laughs> Albino gosling from the <laughs> Western Alps. Nurtured by its mother. So supple. <laughs> you know cattail it. cruisers. <laughs> And plus, they're fashionable. So oh, they look good. I mean, please, that's... please wear these tomorrow when we finally get out of here tomorrow. I need you to wear these when we go eat. Something. Wear these in the hamburger joint. Yes, please, sir, <laughs> sir. What? I'm wearing shoes. No shoes. No shirt. No. Sir. No shoes. No shirt. I'm wearing I'm both. Wearing I'm... shoes. <laughs> wearing You're wearing a shirt on your feet. <laughs> Got them both. These are cattail compatible. Cat. Compatible. That is nice. So, are we looking at it, basically a finished product here, or? I mean, I'm going to market like as soon as I get home. Yeah, I mean, is this going to be on the Wazoo website soon, or? <laughs> I'll probably just supply the cattails <laughs> in the shirt. And you make you're in charge <laughs> a of DIY project. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Get a little bit of a growth on that, yeah. <laughs> off that ankle. Let me, let me work it. Yeah, let's work the, work the angle. Those look great, man. Thank you. Stylish, practical, you know, utility, utilitarian, you know, inexpensive. <laughs> you know, I love everything you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's been a lifelong goal of mine, honestly. Well, I tell you what, you've nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Pretty good? Dude, that is like raspberry pie. That's pretty good. This one does have big seeds in it, though, huh? Yeah. And they're they're actually chewable. We're gonna bake our cattail rhizomes. So I'm just gonna completely cover them in the, uh, in the foil. Gonna cook them up. Cook them up. Steam. Oh, perfect. Oh, steam action. Steamed cattail tubers. A delicacy. Tonight's probably going to be really cold because today was frigid. I don't think it got above 40 degrees today. Um, spent a little time in the sunshine, staying warm. But tonight's going to be really cold. But if we make it through tonight, if we don't die... We'll, uh, we will have just about completed our 72-hour challenge. Tomorrow around midday is when we got to head out. So uh, we'll check back in on the next one. Thanks, guys. Hit that thumbs up, and we'll see you.